is electric. Hi everyone, welcome back to the EV Puzzle for another energy related video. And today's video is about the Bluetti, where is it over here? EB3A portable battery with a 200 watt solar panel connected to it. I'm doing some charge and discharge tests at the moment to work out how much capacity the battery's got. So at the moment it's charging on solar. Um, I think uh, it's an overcast day at the moment. That solar panel has been really, really good, really impressive. I've seen it as high as 150 watts so far, but still not in full sunlight. It's at, like I say, it's overcast today and it's about 90 watts at the moment. So uh, it's half full in under an hour, I think, so far. So it's really practical. Um, I'm really enjoying seeing how a solar panel can add capacity to the battery. But anyway, a uh, bit of a story to tell you about um, this battery before I get into the detail. And that's how I got into it. Bluetti contacted me to ask me if I wanted to test their new AC60 battery. Uh, and also along with that, an expansion battery that comes with it. I think it's another 886 watt hours of energy in a battery, a B80 battery. So you plug that in and it gives you more capacity with it. Now I really like the idea of that, where you have a smaller, more compact, more port portable battery and then you have expansion batteries as and when needed you can take them with you and plug them in for more capacity now that makes a lot of sense because you get the benefit of the smaller portable lighter system that you can take around but then when you need a bigger heavier more capacity you've got that capability too with the plug-in batteries and whether you need one plug-in or two plug-in batteries that mix and match and the be able to build up your system that really appeals to me so i was interested in the ac60 when they asked me to review it so i said yes uh, unfortunately they've run out of stock and they can't send one over so in the meantime they've sent me this eb3a the entry level battery in their range with um, a european spec pv panel so it's a glass panel but in a portable case 200 watt capable and that's plugging in it's charging now on the eb3a outside here and uh, I said yes, I'd review that while I'm waiting for the AC60. So for me, the EB3A isn't the battery that suits my needs best, but that's a really good introduction point to say that with all these different batteries that are available now and all the specs and sizes and the modular ability of the new ones, there's a battery out there for everyone that suits everyone's needs and the devices you need to power on the go or at home for emergencies, etc. And for £269, which is all this EB3A is on, I can't see why a business wouldn't have one of these or a couple of them just to keep their phones on, the internet on, keep their business going. It would just take one poor customer service experience, one extra sale call, one thing, and that would be cost justified easily. So, so I honestly think these portable batteries are an essential for business and they're extremely practical for the uh, personal usage. What do they say about a camera? The best camera is the one you've got with you. And it's the same about power. What's the best kind of power? Well, it's the power you've got with you. So you need something practical. You need something that's portable, something that you can use when you need it. Specification wise, this is a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter with a 1200 watt surge capability. The rated capacity is 268 watt hours. Charging speeds on AC, I saw 265 watts. In total, it can do 430 watts max. That's fast dual charging from both solar and AC. And the solar, that's 200 watt maximum. There's six different ways to recharge the battery from AC, from solar, from a car's 12 volt uh, DC charger, you know, the car cigarette lighter, from a generator, you can do AC and solar together, or AC and adapter. Output connections for charging or powering your devices. You've got the uh, DC output, you've got two of those, plus the 12 volt connection for the cigarette lighter, two USB A's, one USB C 100 watt capable, and one output that's 220, 240 volts in the UK. Plus, there's the wireless charging pad, 15 watts on the top of the battery. But for me, the best feature about this battery is how light it is, how easy it is to carry, just how practical it is. Plus, of course, that very cost-effective price point. I found loads of uses for this EB3A, um, just in our own personal circumstance. And this is from someone that's saying that this size device doesn't really suit me. So I've been powering our phones, our tablets from it. I've been charging up uh, my laptop. So uh, I'll put images up of all these things we've been trying. I've been trying it with just a fan and seeing how many hours the screen says that uh, it will last running it. So lights on it as well. 
slow cooker that worked really really well the slow cooker on low was only 100 watts on high it was 170 watts so plenty of power in that battery for that and that's made me think even a battery that size with a solar panel would be brilliant for cooking like a nice fresh casserole or, or chili in a slow cooker uh, while we're out and about uh, in the field. We do dog shows a lot and uh, spend the day basically camped in a field and this sort of device with the solar panel would be fantastic for that sort of thing. I even managed to charge my electric bike with this and uh, yeah, it's a bit of a funny one really but I started to imagine if you were going on a long trip or if you ran out of charge somewhere and you had somebody in a car that was running along with you but with one of these you've got an extra boost you've got an emergency charge if you actually need it. it's very handy and even as a test I've managed to put this battery inside the panniers on my bike. I could actually take it with me. It's amazing how light and practical it actually is. My electric bike is actually 600 watt hours uh, of battery that's in there. So taking along a 268 watt hours contingency um, is a little bit small, but because it's so light and it's compact, even that's possible. I think that's a good example of showing you how small it is. So the EB3A comes with uh, connectivity over Bluetooth to an app and the app's really simple, really easy to connect to and basically just enables you to see how much battery percentage you've got left and time left. You can turn the sockets on and off, you can turn the lights on and off, but also you can change some of the settings. You can change the eco mode as to whether it automatically powers off or not, or you can put it into UPS mode. Well, there's a mode for extra boost of power. So instead of 600 watts continuous power, it's actually capable, I think, of 1200 watts. I'm not sure how long that would last. It wouldn't last very long with this battery capacity, but the fact it's capable of it is uh, really impressive. So I'm loving the app, loving the size and practicality and the look of this battery, especially with the solar panel. It is really good. On my discharge test, uh, like I said, I managed to get 220, 225 watt hours of capacity out of the battery. And then when I charged it back up on AC, um, I can't remember how much it took, 320, 340 watt hours of energy to go back in. I'll, I'll put the number up on the screen now to uh, let you know. The fact that there's a difference between the two doesn't really matter to me. That's the inefficiency of the conversion between AC and DC and the heat losses that are involved in getting that energy into the battery. So I don't mind that because it's the practicality of using that energy that's worth more than, I mean, it doesn't matter that it's 20% or so different between the two. So some of the images that uh, I've shown you show like a flickering screen and obviously that's just the camera um, speed, the frame speed that I'm using is not quite picking up that screen accurately. When you're looking at it with the naked eye, it's absolutely solid and clear. So uh, apologies for some of the images might not show the screen as clearly as I would like, but uh, it is a very good clear screen. It's very responsive. It's got everything you want to see on it. And uh, when you're charging, it tells you how long it's going to be charged at for that power level. So on solar panel, it's changing all the time, but it's giving you an idea in the hours to go until it's full. And when you've got a load coming from it, it'll tell you how long before the battery is exhausted. On some batteries I've seen, um, it stops at like five or 10% and it cuts out. This one goes down to zero. Now, whether it's really zero or whether there's um, some battery capacity left, another 10% left over, I'm not sure. I guess that's the difference between the spec it says 268 watt hours and I'm getting 220, 225 out of it. What's left is the contingency to make sure you don't brick the battery to make sure it doesn't ruin the battery. There's always some power, but as soon as I run down to zero, it's always good to recharge these back up again and have at least 20, 30% in the battery. So never leave them empty because that really will harm the batteries. Uh, at full, they're not too bad. You can leave them longer for full. They're perfectly left around 50 to 80%. But uh, yeah, leaving them full at 100% for a while isn't a problem. Leaving them at zero, now that, that's a no-no, you definitely don't want to do that. So when I've done my discharge test, I'm charging them straight back up again. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope the EB3A and the Bluetti battery range interest you because I'm fascinated by them and I can't wait to try the AC60 battery when that comes along. I'll just finish before the RAF go through. Thanks a lot. See you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.